Hello everybody, how you doing? I'm back again. A little bit less of a hectic video this time. I um and already Millie's here. I've got Millie and Gwen already, so we're doing well. <laughs> I thought I would sit down and um just talk a little bit more about the um bipedical fold modification. I thought I'd talk a little bit more about what it actually is and um, what my plans are with it going forward. It's, um, as I mentioned a little bit about it in the previous video, but it was all a little bit hectic because I was quite quite excited and I had just been, um, I just think, just think I'd just gotten back in from a run and whatnot. So I thought I would sit down and just discuss the procedure a little bit more. A little bit more in depth about roughly, roughly what it is. Now, I'm certainly no expert on it myself, but it is something I have um, known about for a very, very long time. It, I first stumbled across it when I was a, a teenager. It was probably one of the earliest mods I ever actually found, and I instantly fell in love with it. It's um, due to my fascination with being able to stretch giant piercings and things like that. The idea of essentially being able to have what appears on the surface to be a giant stretch piercing pretty much anywhere on your body even somewhere as random as like on your chest or your stomach or basically anywhere you have skin which is anywhere basically <laughs> the procedure provided provided it holds and it takes well effectively it can be done rough more or less anywhere on your body so it gives you the um, the appearance of giant stretched piercings wherever you want it, basically. And that's that's um, that's basically what appealed to me about it, as, as I'm sure people have figured out. I like big stretch things. Oh, Millie and, Co Millie and Parsnip are going at it, brilliant. <laughs> so yeah, as I'm sure people have figured out, I like big stretched piercings, as well as um, other heavier mods. And so this particular modification kind of draws together the best of both worlds. It's obviously a more advanced heavy modification so to speak and at the same time it has the end result of what appears to be a giant stretched piercing so um yeah basically how the procedure works is an artist would cut more or less two parallel lines and then the tissue is folded under and sewn together underneath so it creates like a little loop a little bridge of skin it's um, it's, a, it's an interesting one. It, it's it's one of those ones. There's very there's no guarantee it will necessarily take, which happens with a lot of lot of anything really. Even basic piercings don't always necessarily actually settle down. But it's um, due to the nature of it. There's often not a great deal of blood supply in it because it's not as though you're folding up veins and things, it's mostly just the surface level capillaries that you're all sort of tucking in there. So, at least initially, during the initial stages of the healing, blood su the blood supply can be relatively restricted. And so, that in what is what, in particular, can often lead this sort of thing to not fully healing and not healing effectively and not healing well. So, it's going to be a tricky one to actually try and heal, but... Um, I've been talking, I have found the artist, and I've been talking to them a little bit. They don't, they're wishing to stay sort of fairly anonymous for the time being. They don't want to draw too much potential negative attention to themselves, which I can fully appreciate that. So I won't be, um, I won't be advertising their work as such or anything like that. At least not at the time being. If maybe if they change their mind or something like that, then who knows. But for the time being, the, uh, the artist would like to remain quite out of the way. So, but they have, um, I have been speaking to them, and they said they're willing to give it a go on me as well. Obviously we discussed the fact that there's not, no guarantee that it will take, but then I knew that already. But, um, it's, I would, it would involve me travelling a little bit, and due to my current situation it will be a little while before I can actually save up and actually go see this person. I've told them this and sort of explained a little bit about it to them. And so we, we haven't obviously got a set date yet. But yeah, for all intents and purposes, it's 
it's looking like it's a go, which is awesome. So, um, yeah, basically, the first, for this, just this very first one, I'm going to ask, or at least we've discussed the idea of having it sort of a vertical one, more or less below my, sort of, where my sternum is, just slightly below there. So it would be about there. So with the hole going left to right, so I could potentially put my finger through like that, for example. And um, so we're just going to do this first one to start with, and I will treat it as a learning experience to see if I can, um, obviously I'll keep an eye on it, see how it heals, all that sort of stuff. And hopefully, fingers crossed, if it does take, if it doesn't take, there's no reason we can't try it again anyway. But if it does take, then it's something I've considered in the past, having, if I were to be able to find someone to do this, as I think I mentioned before, um, it's one I kind of never actually believed I would be able to get because I just didn't think I'd be able to find anybody willing to try and do it. But, um... Cats are being a pain in the again. I'm not quite sure what that <laughs> But, um, yeah, so... After that I used this, just this little first one as a bit of a learning experience, I've always liked... I've always sort of had a fantasy of having multiple sort of on my torso, sort of maybe sort of three or four perhaps along my ribs, and maybe another ladder, or maybe another three or four right down the centre of me and things like that. Whether I'll go quite that far, I don't know. I say, to get a huge amount of them done would obviously be quite expensive, and so it's not something that I would, it would be done immediately. It's something I will build up to over time, maybe get a few more over time. How many exactly I'll get, I don't know. It would. I would like to play around with them a bit, see see how it would work having slightly different size ones, like longer ones or shorter ones, or ones with sort of thicker tissue and things like that. It's something I would um, really like to play around with a lot. So, but this is all things to talk about further down the line, once I actually um, just had this first initial one done, just to see how it goes and how it all heals and all that. So, hey Parson, would you like to come up? No? Yeah, there we go. Parsnip there. Get him out. Good. Here we are. Little parsnip. And she's off. She's a bit camera shy, I think. <laughs> Got tail there. Yep. So yeah, just get this first one done as um, just as like a little initial test the waters sort of thing. Sort of learn a little bit about it. Sort of try and perfect the healing on my end. Obviously, if because it's a bit of a travel away. It, it's, it would involve me going to a different country to do this. If something doesn't go perfectly, then obviously I can't just nip straight back to the, the artist to um, discuss it with them. So it's going to be a big learning experience from my point of view, which is, for me, that's a big part of the fun. That's why I love doing this stuff, just the, the experimenting and the learning about it all. So I'll see what I can learn from this first one and um, what I can take away from the experience and then I will be taking it from there and moving forwards. So, um, yeah, like I say, I'm really excited about this. I'm, I'm fairly confident I should be able to get this all sorted out before the end of this year, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed there aren't any more unexpected calamities going on in my life. <laughs> everything, as a, general, as a general rule right now, everything has settled down in my life. We're getting on top of all the epilepsy and stuff like that. So, um, things are slowly returning to some sort of normality again, which is making it much easier to plan all this sort of stuff and to actually, and actually get these things done, which is really nice. And we have Millie. Hey, madam. Don't know if you saw her. Tail. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it makes it much, much easier to actually organise and do all this sort of stuff now that things are becoming more routine and more sensible again which I'm really, really pleased about, obviously, because it allows me to get back to things like this and my, my various other passions and my other little pursuits in life. And so, um, yeah, all in all, I am feeling really positive that this should actually happen quite soon. Now, obviously, as the gentleman, he is an actual mod artist. I, have meant, I am considering what else I could play with and other little things I could do. I know I've mentioned a handful of things over over the years on the videos, on these videos. 
And so I haven't discussed anything else with him specific yet, but if I do build up a bit of a relationship with him and and I'm happy and I'm happy with the work and whatnot, and I don't see why I wouldn't be. Hopefully, it means it'll lead me further down the line to be able to get some more heavy work done. Um, I've been trying to think exactly what I might like to do. I think. Um, One of the next things that I would probably attempt would be nipple scalping. And I believe I've mentioned this before, because as a general rule, I prefer to get piercings done really small and stretch them up, because I like the experience and the whole process of actually stretching piercings. But at the same time, I've never had a piercing scalpeled, and I, again, I would just like the experience. So that may be something else I'd discuss with him at some point. Something like that. And another one may be uh, something like a transcrotal piercing. It's, it's not really a piercing. It's actually a very similar procedure. It's actually a very similar procedure. Sorry, I'm watching Coco now. These cats, I tell you, they're something else. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, sorry, what was I saying? <laughs> uh, yeah, a transcrotal procedure, really. It's not really a piercing. Essentially what that is, it's it's not entirely unlike, procedural wise, it's not entirely unlike a um, the bipedical flap actually. Essentially, on the face of it, what it would look like would be a, a piercing from the front to back through the scrotum. But you can't really do that as a piercing, I mean technically you could. But that could cause all sorts of complications, as there's all sorts of different layers and things that you don't really want to be sticking needles right through. And wearing long jewellery through something like that could, would make an easy access to all sorts of pathogens and bacteria. So again, basically what is done, in a very very similar way, is a... Oops, she's got a ball. There you go. <laughs> is a... Um, Essentially, a hole is scalpel through, as lovely as this sounds, I'm sure, a hole is scalpel through, then the outer layers of the skin of the front and the back are sewn together. So, essentially, you make a giant fistula, a giant piercing right through, right away. So, it's, it's very, very similar in a lot of ways to the, um, to the, um, bipedical flat procedure. So, that is... That is probably another thing that relatively soon I would discuss with him at some point. But that's it's all getting ahead of myself. These are things that I won't, wouldn't be doing immediately. They're things I will talk about for maybe next year or the year after that. I say I am no rush to get all these things done. I am quite happy and I'm quite patient. You have to be patient when you're doing stuff like this. I am quite happy to gather these different modifications up gradually over time and to um, yeah, slowly slowly work towards my end goal so to speak. Not that I really have an end goal it's just a case of I don't know, I suppose in a way it's more like a, just building up a collection of different modifications and just experimenting with different things as I go. So yeah, they are probably the two that I would be most interested in discussing with him at some point. But um, yeah, that's getting my head itself a bit. I will um, wait to do to figure out more with this particular, with the bipedical flap thing first. And yeah, once that's, once that's more out of the way and more definite and more, um, more planned, I will then start discussing other things with him as well. So that's something to look forward to. I'm really looking forward to all this. All in all, it's, um, I'm quite excited about everything. It's um, yeah, it's nice that after all these years to now be in a situation where I'm actually starting to move forwards with a lot of my old plans again, which is really nice. So pretty much all of these plans I have had for a long, long time. I just, um, for one reason or another, just haven't been in a situation to actually start doing them and start working on them. So yeah, this is all... Um, all good news. I'm very, very happy with how things are going right now. And finally, yeah, finally I'm able to start collecting more modifications and more holes all over the place. So yeah. <laughs> all good. All really happy. All positive news. 
though yeah, I will, um, for this video, I'll call it quits here. I actually had another video that I was planning on uploading today, a little bit more about my lathe, and um, sort of starting to make plugs and things like that. But I will, I will hold on to that for next week. And um, yeah, I will get this posted up pretty much right now. No reason not to, I'll get this done. And yeah, I will um, speak to you all again very soon. I hope this has been interesting and enjoyable and, and yeah, that's about it. <laughs> to half an hour, I will speak to you all again very soon, I have no doubt. Goodbye for now. Where's the off button gone? Where are we going? I lost it. Draw.